Guys, welcome back. Today, we got to talk about the options for the Batman sequel. We got a lot of Easter eggs. Yes. We got a lot of shots of people that we know. Who's going to be next to go up against the Batman? Guys, Chris and Rob here, the Jersey Comic Crew. Welcome back to another exciting episode covering the Batman. Because, of course, we're covering the Batman. Of course. All we're going to talk about is the, the Batman. Batman. <laughs> so, Rob, we, we kind of have this Batman issue where the yeah. villains are kind of using him as a muse. What do you think is going to be the problem with that going forward as well as Ooh. maybe some other characters we'll see? I like that because Batman is his own worst enemy. Like, he creates his villains. So many, like, character origin stories in the comics are related to, like, when you came around, Batman, you inspired me. I did this and that. And that's kind of like what the Riddler did here, right? Uh, the one scene I want to touch upon real quick is a scene that I guess could have been or should have been an after credit scene was, like, yeah. the Riddler in prison talking to this guy next door right and he's like oh riddle me this like what do you have like it's the, a friend right it's a friend and i'm like oh yeah immediately i start losing my mind i'm like everybody's like who is this who is this is this the joker kind of sounds kind of sounds kind of sound like jerome from gotham right and i was like a little bit. i was like is this the joker like and then we heard the laugh at the end like ha, ha, ha. i'm like okay Obviously, this is another villain. Immediately, my mind starts racing. The, uh, the obvious is like, is this the Joker? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say no. I don't think it's the Joker. Uh, just because we got a funny laugh at the end, I don't think it's the Joker. Everybody's like, it's the Joker. It's the Joker. I feel like that's just too on the nose. What? I'm like, it, I think it is. Conspiracy theory? <laughs> I think it's a conspiracy theory, right? I At first, like when I looked at the face before he did like everything, I was like, is this Two-Face? reason i said that was because like his yeah. face looked looked a little weird right i was like yeah huh? it was definitely scarred up and mangled like, and one different. side was scarred up the other side looked fine i was like is this I, did we see the other side we didn't but like i'm assuming right it was like it looked scarred up and maybe this other side was fine i got a glimpse i was like maybe i just got an instinct i was like is this two-faced because we know they like work together in the past we know from that movie i'm like oh maybe maybe it's that i was like all right no it's not that we heard the laugh i'm like okay who, who's crazy who could do this, who has a laugh that's not the Joker? The reason I think it's not the Joker, I think it's too much for them. Like, we put the Joker in this movie. Uh, I just, I just, I guess I just don't want to accept that that's the Joker because it just. I get that. It did. It I just didn't that. fit for me. I was like, it could even be Mad Hatter. It, just, it could be any one of these crazy people Jervis that just laughs, Tish. right? It could just, it could be something like that. I so don't I, know. I get, I get what you're saying. I think this character in the prison is 100% the Joker uh, for a couple reasons. Number one. There was a rumor that Barry Cogan was going to be the Joker in this movie yes. in some time of cameo role anyway. Barry Cogan's also the guy who played Druid mm -hmm. in the Eternals movie. And this was kind of like this theory that was out there. It was a rumor. It was kind of a leak. So it kind of just was a confirmation of that. I think what Rob was trying to say, and I think I get what you're saying, is we don't want another Joker movie. Yeah. We don't I need don't. another Joker movie. No. I don't necessarily think... Matt Reeves wants a Joker movie. I think Warner Brothers in DC is like, you can't have Batman without Joker. It's too big of a moneymaker. There has to be some hint of Joker. I don't think Matt Reeves has any kind of thought process to be like, I'm going to do exactly the Dark Knight style where movie two is Riddler and this is the focus. I don't think it did not feel like that to me, Rob. No. And I think this character has two options. One is the obvious one where he is the villain of the second movie. I really hope not. Because when I saw him on screen... The Joker I, or, or The Nygma. Joker. Okay. The Joker. And and when I saw him on screen, I was a little disappointed. I was like, oh, no. Like, we don't need another Joker movie. Like, come on. No more Jokers for now. We could, we could, There's so many other great Bat characters we could do. Yeah. Batman's rogues villain in, in gallery villains is just amazing. Like, let's touch on someone else. Very true. The other side, though are these TV shows that HBO Max are spinning out of this movie that we know of. There yes. are three. And one of them just got announced like a day or two before this movie popped out. Yes, tell them. Who is it? Number one is The Penguin Show, which we all knew with Colin Farrell. Yes. Which is going to be great because that's going to be like, what, him gaining his ground in Gotham after the end of the exactly. movie, right? Number two is a Gotham-style show. So my guess is a Jim Gordon in the precinct kind of doing smaller tasks Maybe getting oh, those CD sure. list villain, villains that Batman it, it is too busy to go after. Maybe like a Victor Zaz or like a Jervis Tetch you were talking about. It could even Calendar be. Calendar Man. Like, <laughs> like if you look at the two shows, it's Penguin and his rise to become Oz to become Penguin. 
maybe it's Lieutenant Gordon, his rise to become Captain Gordon, there Chief Gordon, go. whatever they want to do with Gordon. Yeah. Kind of like what you wanted with Gotham, but they kept throwing fucking Bruce in it. I'm like, stop it. Just, I just yeah, want and, him. And it just was bad. But maybe this will, this will be better. And if Matt Reeves is behind it, that's even better. And the third show that he just announced will be an Arkham Asylum yes, style like show. That. So if this show is more like, hey, Joker's just going to be in Arkham Asylum messing stuff up for people, corrupting, manipulating, being the smartest guy in every room. I am totally okay with that. If it's a TV show, we don't necessarily need to cross them over. The other thing, Rob, that, that happened in this movie really quickly was that in the beginning of the movie, the first people that Batman takes down are these like clown face Joker type goons. Yeah, well, they look like either Joker type or like they were skulls or something. They were, they were definitely very interesting. But to me, they had smiles on. They had they the did. jester look, right? I think because this was year two and the reason we see Joker in Arkham Asylum already is because Batman's already taken him down. And this is year two, remember? It's been two years since he's been Batman. I think Batman's already gone against Joker. We see a couple shots where, you know, he takes his shirt off. He's already got scars on him. Yeah. He's already starting to get like the Batman bruises and the scars and different fights. I think he's already gone against Joker and has put Joker away. And now that you have Riddler and Joker in there, they are going to cause chaos within Arkham Asylum. And I think that's what's going to fuel this new TV show. Okay. I don't necessarily know if that is going to be the next villain of the main movie. Here's the other thing. It could also be nobody. It could literally be not the Joker. It could just be some random inmate that they tease and make us think that it's the nope. Joker. The whole Gotham, sorry, the whole Arkham Asylum thing could be Edward Nigma just messing with people, doing other stuff. I, when you say Arkham Asylum, right, immediately my mind goes to the Harleen comic, that like Black Label story. Yep. Where it's Harleen, Quinzel, and the Joker. Like they're like be the beginnings of it. Like she's coming in and doing all that kind of stuff. It it's really comes to a point like how much of this ties into the DCEU, which we'll, we'll cover another time, that's going to dictate what these shows are going to be you know what i mean yeah i i totally get that but i think i'm okay with watching that as a show long format i am detailed stuff right to me it's almost like you know like obi-wan like give me some more information in sure. this time period right i'm okay with that as the show the arkham asylum show or the penguin gotham show whatever it's going to be kind of creating their build up for hbo max of the shows i'm okay with joker being the focal point of one of those shows and his like time at Arkham, what he does in his daily life, how he manipulates yeah. people, how he gets guards to like help him out, how the manipulation of Harley Quinn. I will we see Margot Robbie in this show? Highly doubtful. Will it be a new Harley Quinn? Who knows if they eventually do that? We know she wants to kind of take a break from doing Harley and do like you know more of her Oscar award she winning does. stuff. And so that's going to be interesting too. But I also want to know, Rob, who do you think is going to be if it's not Joker, right? And Edwards away. No Riddler, no Joker. They're off the table. Sure. Right? Who do you think is going to be the villain of a second Batman, if not a third Batman? This overall storyline. I would love. Arc. So, like, when you said the Arkham show, immediately my mind starts taking, like, that's the build up for the second one. If it's not one of those big guys, who is it going to be? I think a fantastic follow up villain would be Hugo Strange. Ooh, interesting. Hear me out. Hugo Strange is uh, Love Hugo Strange. one of the lead scientists in Arkham, experiments all on all these kind of people. What better would it be to evolve this Batman who we know who we know his mother is from the Arkham family and this institution that we get saying we're learning more about it. It could be like, oh, Hugo Strange is involved. We find out like he maybe did stuff to his mother to make him go crazy. Another attack in his family he goes into it. And Hugo Strange could be like Kind of like the Riddler. It's like he's setting up all this kind of stuff, sending goons out there, experimenting on people. He's trying to figure out what's going on, the secrets behind Arkham, Hugo Strange, and what his true motivation could be. And at the same time, you could unite that. We're like, all right, that's what's going on here. And in the other belly world, like Crime Lord Penguin is becoming this big threat. Like he has to take down. Like he's building up his empire. He has to deal with the Penguin while dealing with the stuff with Hugo. I kind of like the fact that like these street level villains, especially. Batman has to deal with multiple fronts at multiple different angles. He's like, all right, 
what's going on with my parents and like this whole Arkham thing. Like, I got to see what they're actually doing to these inmates. Like, inmates have gone missing over time. Like, what's going on? They're coming out. They're crazier. They could do all that kind of stuff. They could take that step if they want to put an eccentric villain. Jervis Tesh, the Mad Hatter, was in there, left, got this craziness from Hugo, and, like, went on a killing spree. And that sets Batman down the path of, like, what's going on here. Because a lot of his stories is like, oh, I'm going to tackle this guy who's, like, this big villain or B villain like somebody out there and he's like oh you're doing this because of this follow that breadcrumb trail leads us to hugo strange that'd be interesting i i have a couple thoughts here and and one of them is kind of now going to go with your type of hugo style mm -hmm. um which matt reeves has talked about possibly doing that he would love to tackle this character and that's mr freeze uh, in a realism I, yes way. i think we need um, a mr freeze I, I think Rob is in agreement with me. Mr. Freeze is one of my, if not our, favorite Batman villains of all time. He's so underrated. Uh, so underrated. If you watch Batman the Animated Series, he's easily a top three villain. Um, I would love a story where Bruce has to... Because this Bruce is very in his fundamentals right now, yeah. right? He's early. He's raw. He's all about, you know, justice and vengeance. He's all about, like, just fighting the corrupt and the evil and finding out the truth and, and positive you know, people that he hangs on to, right? Yeah. What about a, a, a Mr. Freeze who is doing wrong things for the right reasons, right? Similar to Selena. I like that. Similar to Selena. Where does that put Bruce at odds with him where he's hurting people but to save Nora or to save people? And what if it? What if it's not just that disease that Nora had that degenerates her, like, cells? Mm -hmm. What if it's the same mental issue his mother had? Oh, what if it's connected I to like Martha it. Wayne? Where it's like, instead of putting people into Arkham where all of the crazy loonies are that you sent there, what if I could do this and save people like your mother <laughs> that he doesn't know his mother, but like, oh my God, like that becomes an internal conflict I like that, that I want to see. So those are some real cool conflict driven things for Batman that would also be great in a villain as he's ascending to the peak of Batman where he's going to, you know, now barely take a punch and, you know, do all that other cool stuff. I like that. And if we, if that was the second movie in this trilogy that me and you were making, then my movie with Hugo Strange should be the third movie then. And then it could come about where, like, the, the super villains are coming out even... Like, it's the, the full boom is here, right? Like, <laughs> the, like it's the start off with this one. The next one's Mr. Freeze doing the things for the right reasons. One eccentric guy. The full boom is here with Hugo Strange in the back. The ruler's out doing crazy stuff. You could even have the Joker out here because he released them. And, like, he's all this stuff is happening. And he's fighting on so many different points. And he's like, what's the root cause of all this? Oh, it's Hugo. Hugo's making the people in Arkham worse. Essentially accelerating their path of becoming supervillains. Like, this kind of stuff. That'd I think be that'd cool. be a cool trilogy for us. But you said you have another theory on what the second movie could be about. I do, and I think this is where the trajectory is going for the entire series. I know Pattinson's on for like a thousand movies. I hope they make a thousand movies. Yeah, but fine. for this arc, this story arc, if it's three or four or two, whatever, I think the next villain clearly should be Hush. It they has mentioned to be Hush. Hush a lot. And it is the first video, I believe, that Riddler has where it just, there's a, just Hush just comes up on the screen. And I'm like, whoa! Also, like, what are we doing here? That and everybody Riddler attacks. Obviously, it's not bandages, but he tapes up their entire head. That is like Hush's moniker where it's taped up and, and it's not duct tape, but it's wrapped up. That would be a great person to not only flip the script, right? Where it's still a detective story. Yes. You still have Detective Batman. Bruce is becoming coming into his own now, right? He's better. He's... Not maybe not as angry with his parents and raw or kind of flippant with Alfred as he was in this movie, oh, right? Oh, Christopher, and I love you. I like this. <laughs> and now he's getting into his own where he's way more confident. He's playing the Bruce Wayne role a little more, right? Yeah. This one, he's a recluse. There's almost no Bruce Wayne in this movie. No. Right? And when you see Bruce Wayne, you're kind of like he's just like this angry emo teenager almost, right? Like this angsty kid. Because he doesn't realize that he has to put up the front. Yeah, he's like, I just want to be Batman the whole time. not there yet. And I loved it, though. I was like, this is different. I love it. I but And I can't wait to see the trajectory where we get to see him as a, a mogul and putting the suits on. Yes. Right? He doesn't even put a shirt and tie on in this movie except for a funeral. And this character this getting so taken cool. down by Tommy Elliott, another childhood friend in the same category and kind of fueling this like 
it's not just Batman that's fueling these villains. It's also Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. It's the amount of attention I like he gets. This. The media. I like this. And then not only that, where Riddler was someone who you had to take down simply with the mind. This guy, you have to take down with your mind and get a step head, and, and then you got to fight, fight him. him and beat him. I do so, like this because it's like him becoming his own, right? He's like, oh, I have to be the man of two fronts. He's like evolving as Batman. He's like, all right, I'm Batman, but also have to be Bruce Wayne because of this problem. A lot of you get a lot of villains in Hush that like we've seen here before. Like you could replace, you could put the Penguin here. Catwoman shows up. Catwoman's but perfect. But remember, comeback. at the end of Hush, this was all because of the Riddler, and the Riddler's in jail. Wow, all this is happening. So, so you can make the, it already. You could make the Riddler still Boom. the behind the scenes of Hush. And like this whole trilogy is like how dangerous the Riddler really is. If this could be a Riddler trilogy without even being him as the main focus in all the movies. Because he's already done it, right? He's, like he's the done stuff it. With, the stuff with the water and the bombs and the people, he's done. He was already caught, right? Yeah. He had, he had a post plan. And now if he's in jail with Joker. And they're talking about, you know, that's the for the cover. third movie and the second the movie Hush. And oh, he's like, he's like, I hey, think so. I did all I this to Hush and he's behind in Hush. He's behind yeah. it all. Cool. Third movie. He gets out with Joker and they become the more flamboyant comic style Joker and Riddler or even just the flamboyant Riddler doing stuff. Maybe. I don't uh, know. I, I'm down uh, for it. I'm in a different angle, though. What you, so what's let's your angle? If, let, let's see if I can blow your mind twice. I'm, I'm ready. Is, <laughs> um, blow me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that to me? <laughs> so we have, if if in a perfect world, right, this makes sense, Hush is in a second movie. A character that me and Rob love. To me, it's the greatest Batman story of all time. I think the third movie has to be, has to be Court of Owls. No. It can't not be. I think, I think they've already set it up in this movie. They've already set up the whole thing. We went after Batman's elite. It was all about people we can't talk about. Uh, people were dying, willing to die more than give up people. You think it stops at Carmine Falcone, who's just kind of this gangster? I think it goes deeper, man. I, I think the city corruption, all this stuff. When you go into the Wayne Manor, which I love that gothic, it reminded me of like Beast Tower and Beauty of the Beast. Yeah, it was, well, it's not really Wayne Manor, it's just the Beast. It's just Wayne Tower. I think he's going to move yeah, into like the, the home and make Wayne Manor. But yeah. yeah, that. And and I think that aspect of it, when he goes to his parents' room for the first time in years, clearly, there are these two birds as the handles. Oh, I did see that. When you walk in. Everything we talked about in this movie, all the riddles involve birds, right? Penguin. Falcone is Falcon, right? All you had were these, like, hints, the rat with wings. Like, all this stuff was there right in front of us. Everyone's in masks. Everybody's masked up in this. I think I, I, I love that masks. idea. I don't think we're getting that as the third movie. I think, I think it's, it's going to show up, man. If, if I really do. he is down for a whole bunch of movies. He is. Like, like let's say, like, nine. I think I can see this. <laughs> nine I can, movies. My, it would be, make Fast and Furious and Harry Potter look like movies. Nothing. Okay. Like, I think I think I can see the Court of Owls being something done down the road I, th I just think he's too young i think it's it's year two batman we're but having fun three. enjoying all this by movie three, three is down the road what like three years no i'm talking no, about like more th like the next the next movie probably won't be out till at least 2024 20 you shut your mouth it's coming out tomorrow no. <laughs> yeah like it, it won't like that reality especially with these shows that are tying into it right we don't know how how yeah, far those shows are tying bad. in that's either bad. where it's like is it is it going to be like season 1.5 or like is it Bat the Batman 1.5? Because you got to assume the Penguin stuff is after the end of the Batman. Yeah, and I would so, assume Goth the Gotham show. And Gotham, Arkham is and obviously Arkham, you have to see Batman to kind of know the start of what's going on there. But I would assume that's going to happen after. I, I would say movie two is another three years away, which makes what movie three at least seven or eight years away. Like that's a oh, long time. Maybe. You I mean, know? So like, if, if, if they if do TV years, shows like in between the movies and stuff like that and expand the universe, mm -hmm. I, I think I could be on board with that because then it's like, all right, we know a lot more of the stuff and he could still appear in the other stuff. And I feel like I feel like if they do this like aspect of like, all right, the big events are in the Batman movie and then the regular every day and all this other stuff are here and he still could appear in the stuff. I think that'd be cool. Like the special event, like the crossover, like the big moments. It's a movie, right? It's like, oh, it's the Batman movie. He's like, hey, I have to do this kind of stuff. This is yep. 
everything the whole town has been leading up to this uh friction point right this climax it's like oh all the events in the penguin and in the gotham show and arkham is all leading up to this crazy stuff that batman 2 is going to be cool and yeah. then you have more tv shows that leads all up to the court of Owls stuff cool that'd be cool i i think that could be the the mindset that they're going with and i think people would like that uh i like the court of Owls. i think it's cool but like i'm i'm just so much enjoying the young batman seeing all his like most famous rogues galleries and yeah. the new kind of style as much as i would like to see court of Owls, i'd rather see a victor freeze movie I, I would love a Victor Freeze movie, and you could have both, right? And it's all these movies true. have multiple villains. True, I, very true. I think, I think it would be interesting, though, if a Court of Owls movie is there, because you have movie one, Riddler, Zodiac, Seven-style, Psychopathic Killer. Movie two, Hush, close family friend, but maybe behind the scenes you have the Riddler, Joker in jail, pulling strings. Yeah. Movie three, Court of Owls, then it becomes a Hannibal Lecter movie. I mean, then it could also Batman be... has to go to Arkham and ask the Riddler, yeah. what do you know about these people? And it becomes a rapport again, which Riddler always wanted them yeah. to be a team. I and could I definitely think that see would be it really being cool. uh, one giant mystery. Like somebody set Riddler up to do this and he didn't realize it or he doesn't care. And then or next... he can't figure it out. Like yeah. he's going nuts because he can't figure it, it out. It could be that. And he's like, I'm doing this. I want to get this done anyway. Fine. The next movie, we get a little bit more to the clues. Like the reason this happened was because of Riddler and this other thing. And that happened because somebody else wanted it. Who's the one behind the one behind the one behind it all is the Court of Owls. If they do that, I'm fine with that. I, I and It could be. And think about this, too. Like, we already found out the Waynes aren't clean. Yeah. Right? Like, we, we know that Gotham's elite. This movie proved that. They're all mm -hmm. dirty. What is going to happen down the line when this gets bigger? That's not going to de-escalate, right? In, in sequels. I get that. You have to escalate these scenarios. So what is that going to prove? If we don't escalate it to something, whether it's quarter hours or not, I think that would be a great storyline. And I think it's been enough time now where they could do it and, and talk about finding out your family's past, like finding out if they were part of oh, the yeah. court or if they were fighting against the court or maybe this. That's why the water dam broke, right? That allowed the court to kind of retake a lot of territory or get back into Gotham because it's such a shit show. I think it would be really cool to see Hush and 2 in court and 3, but that's just me. But guys, we want to know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think the next Batman movie is going to be about. Give us your wildest theories right here. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up like. It really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe, turn on notifications. If you want to miss conversations like this or conversations we're going to have in other videos, we're still talking Batman. And if you miss anything, make sure you check it out right here on the channel. And as always, my name is Chris Heller. That's Rob Moran. We are the Jersey Comic Group, and we will see you next time.